Yo, how's it going everyone? So today's video is going to be a little bit more different than my usual tutorials that I make. I got an email the other day from a really cool guy. He introduced me to this library called Mantine. Now you might be thinking, isn't that a Pokemon? No, I wish it was. I mean, it is a Pokemon, but then this will be a Pokemon reviewing channel. It's not. So what this is, it's a uh, library that I think can be the next big thing in my opinion. Now, why do I say that? I think this library does something that I've never seen other libraries do before, and that's have custom hooks created that don't depend on the library's components themselves. So if I click on get started, and I look on this left hand column right here, we have this thing called Mantine hooks. These are all the hooks that you have available to you that you can use independently in your own project without having to actually use any of the components that Mantine has. And I think this is a really useful thing that can save you a lot of time and a lot of resources whenever you're building your projects. If I had a dollar for every single time I needed to copy something on the click of a button, I'd have like three dollars by now. It's weird that it happened more than once, but with Mantine, it has a hook specifically for that that I never really even think that would even exist. And basically this is really, really simple to use. It has amazing documentation on how to implement it. All you have to do is you just have to import the actual hook. You create a variable with it and you just apply it on the click of a button and you just put in whatever you want to copy. So my most favorite hook that's available in this library is called use form. It's really good for managing form states, handling values and validations. And I usually use formic and yup for form validation and submission. But with this, I'm able to just use a simple hook and I'm able to easily implement it into my application. And the only downside that I would have with this is that it doesn't actually allow me to use Yup for validation. Um, and so I would have to use something like regex to be able to test some value. Um, and I think in the future, if they do implement Yup, that would be a huge, huge plus in using this actual hook. There's also some hooks that I never really thought that would even exist which is called use OS, which can basically just detect what your operating system is that the user is running your application on. I don't really know in what circumstance you would need to use this for, but I think that it would also have its own uses that also helps you cut down a lot of the time and resource that you would need to be able to implement this yourself as opposed to using this hook. All right, so that covers hooks at a high level. I think the documentation does a really good job in explaining how to use these into your application, how to implement it with TypeScript, and most importantly, how to actually set the definitions for this into your application so you don't have to guess around on how to actually set it up. Now let's go ahead and talk about components. So there's a lot of amazing components that come with this library, and there's some that are still missing in my opinion, but the ones that you do have, the ones that a majority of people will use, like the buttons, like the chips, like the input fields and the text fields, those type of components come with library and this library does a really good job in actually explaining the usages and how to actually set it up in your application they also have this customization that you have next to the next to the actual component itself um, not all of them have it but most of them do and then it also implements it down here in this code as well now how does this library compare to some of the components that you find in something that's more popular like a material ui type of library I think it holds its own pretty well for the majority of components. Um, there's some things that I feel like is still lacking that I hope that can be implemented at some point in time where you have this ability to see the entire source code and how to implement it into your application if it was a separate component to be able to edit it in sandbox. And if that was implemented into this library, I think that would just push it way above material UI in my opinion. And it would just give its own feel to it, especially with this customizability that I was talking about earlier, where I can go ahead and select whatever I want, and then it automatically it automatically adds the code down here that I can immediately import into my application. So I think this library has its pros and cons, just like any other library. Um, I think the huge pro is the hooks 100%, and also the innovation that it has with components that I would never ever think that would exist, like code where you can implement code blocks into your own project. Now, would I use this for my own personal projects? Would I use this library? At this point in time, I wouldn't, mainly because there's not enough support in general in the general internet, such as like code sandbox examples or Stack Overflow articles. Um, but they do have a Discord group, which is awesome to see, 
where you can ask questions and you'll get a response pretty fast. I'll definitely be making more videos on this library. I think that the hooks, the components, and the documentation is really bloody good. And if you do enjoy these types of videos and you want to see more like this, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all in the next one.